Today on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Inner Power Corporation, the premier supplier for power system components with a one-week manufacturing lead time and over four million parts in stock, we're working out with Robo Simeon, exploring the deepest place on Earth, saving brains, and we're locked and loaded with a semi-automatic needle gun. Intravenous catheters are common when providing patients with fluids and any other medley of pharmaceutical wonders. The nurse comes in, finds a vein, needle, fluids, etc. It seems easy enough, but the motor coordination that the task requires is very demanding, particularly in children and infants. This often causes pain, so. stress, and frustration. The simple procedure actually has a failure rate of almost 50%. To address this need, students at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and clinicians at the Hadassah Medical Center created a semi-automatic handheld device for rapid and safe needle insertion. There are a few words I never want to hear in the same sentence. Semi-automatic and needle insertion. Called the Segev, the device uses infrared sights and electrical sensing to identify veins, correctly insert the needle, and withdraw it with a single rapid robotic movement. The group's prototype has already been tested successfully on children at the medical center's pediatric ward. As you would expect, the group already has a number of excited parents asking to use the device. And when you're sitting next to this, who can blame them? UCLA professor Vijay Gupta is applying his expertise in materials science, mechanical engineering, and bioengineering to protect the brain from forces that cause concussions and traumatic brain injury. His new polymer has the potential to weaken the forces of helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits on a football field or shockwaves from explosive devices on a battlefield. By building on previous research about brain injuries from the 1960s and a more recent study from the NFL, Gupta added a two millimeter thick wafer of a firm but flexible polymer he devised to reinforce the helmet's foam padding without drastically changing the design. He tested his new material with lasers and a grandfather clock sized hammering machine which yielded up to a 25% reduction in the force a person would feel. Gupta also thinks that adding his polymer to military helmets could diminish the effects soldiers experience when subjected to powerful shock waves from explosive blast. The Deep Sea Challenger is part-time filmmaker and full-time explorer James Cameron's groundbreaking submersible that recently achieved an 11,000 meter, or 6.8 mile, solo dive to the Challenger Deep, the deepest known spot at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. The expedition took place in March 2012, and on board the vessel was New Scale Technology's tiny piezoelectric M3F focus module, which enabled high-quality 3D image capture in miniature high-definition 3D cameras. The submersible's tiny HD cameras were enclosed in titanium pressure housings and mounted on the outside of the submersible on a robot arm. Two cameras sitting side by side enabled a 3D image capture. According to Adam Gobi, technical project lead for cameras and imaging, the team needed to integrate remote focus control into the external 3D cameras. Size was a major constraint, and the internal volume of the custom titanium housing had to be minimized. The design challenge called for a custom HD SDI camera that isn't much bigger than the average thumb. And after a review of the other available technology, Gobi specced in the M3F. The project was such a success that the M3F focus modules could be incorporated in 3D cameras for the entertainment industry in the future, including the Avatar sequel. Oh yeah, that's my kind of cat lady. DARPA has been holding a competition to help develop what could be the next step in the evolution of disaster reconnaissance and recovery, the DARPA Robotics Challenge. That's all well and good, but DARPA aside, the robotics that are precipitating out of this competition are incredibly complex. JPL and Stanford have designed and started initial construction of their Simeon-inspired robot, the Robo Simeon. The robot uses deliberate and stable operation to work through tasks via teleoperation, according to the researchers. The team will employ elements and programming that have shown success in JPL's athlete and lemur robots. The really eerie yet profound thing about the Robo Simeon are its four limbs with hands attached. The hand-limb system is capable of both mobility and manipulation to achieve passively stable stances, plus the thing can climb up a ladder. 
That's not to mention the robot's heading agnostic perception, mobility, and manipulation, which allows it to understand its surroundings and adjust without any reorientation. I just wish my workouts looked that graceful. Physical prototyping has just begun, but the team is already well on their way to start successful robot recon. Get to the chopper! Yup, that happened. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Megan Zima, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.